Hello. Hello, you're all right. I was going to like play some like sad music, but here we are. <laughs> here we are indeed. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. That's good. We have big news this weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Monday today, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's one of them. It's um, it's uh, it's sad, you know what I mean, but uh. Well, I'm happy with my decision, to be honest. I'm happy with it. I'm all right with it. Can we, can we like, slow it all down and go into detail? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. yeah we how, did this, how did this all come about? Because the last that everyone would have heard from you was you were getting ready to not only fight Hammer, but obviously with the Chris Lovejoy saga, that fallen true. And then it was, I met on the 21st, opponent isn't yet to be announced. And then there was talk of Fabio Wardley in January for a British title. Well, I think, I think when it all started, probably uh, before the Lucas Brown fight, beat Lucas Brown. So the death of Lucas Brown, um, you know, I, I'm, I was fully thinking I'm going to go and challenge the British Championship of the world at this point. I'm going to win it. I don't, I don't know, probably not. But I'm thinking, you know what, I can box the British title. Things were going well with Darren, everything was flying. I thought, right, brilliant. Six weeks later, you know, I burnt out a little bit. I'd never trained hard in my life, never mind, consistently for three months. I was exhausted, went home, packed up. Thought I might beat David Price anyway, don't worry about it. So I lost to David Price and, um, you know, the, the night I lost the Price, I was in the hospital, you know, the ambulance trip. I was unconscious for about about 40 minutes, I think. Uh I was paralysed for an hour and a half, my arms and legs. Um, so, you know, I, the first thing I opened up, I woke up with my sister on the phone to my mum. I was saying, in the, we're on the way to the hospital now. And uh, and to be honest, I wasn't sure I'd ever box again. And for months after, I didn't really think I was. I pulled out of a fight October 2019. And uh, I didn't think I'd ever box again. So, I did end up boxing again. Did a six-round at Sheffield, Pots, Donny and Darch. Um, and, uh, and you know what? When I went with James and with MTK, I thought, I thought, yeah, I'll get a good go, proper go. I did get fit, but uh, I, I, I don't believe, as you know, in things happening for a reason. I think it's a lot of bollocks. I think life is things happen. They are what they are. Every, I don't. I believe there's a reason for everything, and it ain't a load of bollocks. Reason that I can't see. It's the reason it happens because it happens. Mm -hmm. But like, I do think. I could have, I should have boxed ten times. I had like ten chances where I could have boxed this year, even with coronavirus, and it's not happened for one reason or another. And I think, I think there's a reason behind it. I don't think I'm meant to box ever again. I think it probably saved me from from something bad happening to me. To be honest. So you know, like when we look at the David Price fight and the injuries that you sustained, like. The fact that there was temporary paralysation is massive. A lot of people that were in your position there and then would have said, that's it, I'm not yeah. going to do this anymore, I'm walking away from it. Yeah. And, you know, when you've when you done interviews then afterwards, you weren't making light of the situation, but, you know, you were like, well, I just, you know, I was temporarily paralysed. Well, here we are and I'm going to fight again and that's that. So, you know, has that been playing on your mind? Did, did it play on your mind a little bit more than maybe... You were telling us about. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I I look. I want to walk all my life. I don't want to ever lose the power of being able to walk. That terrifies me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know what? I wasn't fully aware. I saw my medicals in January the time, and it it was a real process passing my medicals. It was right. It was hard. I was in Glasgow for Jay's fight, and I had to come back to Sheffield to have a scan on my spine and my neck. And uh, it was touch and go whether I'd pass a medical to be honest the box. I had to go and see the board. I had to have a proper, not just, I had to have a, where it sounded board me and I had to go and see if I'd get re licensed because of the injuries and stuff. So, um, so I, I had all that done. And, and that's when I found out of the concussions on my spine. If I'd never boxed enough for the price fight, I had an hospital report. I never even read it, to be honest. I didn't even, I didn't even, wasn't even bothered. I thought, I'm going to box again. That's that. But, um, why did you not read it? Because you didn't want to see what, what I'd was... I'd rather not know. Yeah. I've had loads of things with me over the years. I'm just like, you know what, leave it. It's niggling away at me, but it doesn't matter. If I ignore it, if I don't know I'm dying, I won't die. That's how I tend to live my life. <laughs> so, um, so so, I had two concussions on my spine, and that's why I, that's why I was paralysed. 
And but it gave me at least a life to be honest because I thought I'd jacked it against press. I thought I'd quit, and I hadn't. If anything, it was a miracle that I was still being. Able, I did ten rounds. A miracle. The the doctor that felt that scene said some people wouldn't even be able to to stand up. Wouldn't even be able to be still be conscious for the amount of time you were after the injuries. The fact that you're still in there boxing, he said, it's like it's it's unbelievable. thing like there's not many people in the world could do that so I thought you know what yeah there's something left there must be something left I'm not I didn't quit I've, I've, I'm fucking superhuman so anyway I thought I'd carry on but uh 2020 we've, we've locked down and stuff and I'm getting a bit older and you know when I was 23 24 or when, younger up until up until after the prize fight I'd have died me just just to out fight anyone do you know what I mean Mm. Just to say I'm harder than you, I'd have died for it. <laughs> and uh, but that, but I realise now that's immaturity. I used to think it was good and brave, and I was hard and all this, but it's not really stupidity. What was the point? You're frozen. <laughs> I'm back now. You're back now. <laughs> and, uh, I had to, re- I had to re- I reassess everything. And I was training so hard and everything. But then when it came down to it, I sat on the floor. What do I want? A few more quid and a few more fights? Or do I want to grow old happily with some kids? And I thought, and eventually I thought, it ain't worth it anymore, David. You need to just, just stop. You've done, you've done enough. I'm proud of what I've done. And I came to terms with that. So was there anyone who spoke to you about it before you made that decision? Had anyone close to you said... Maybe it's time you should consider this. Well, I still not spoke to my old man now. I thought my old man had ring me in two days and he hadn't rung me yet. I haven't even spoke to my old man yet about it. But, uh, Why didn't you ring him, though? He's probably well, He probably thought you, you would have rang him first. He, he should ring me. So, um, <laughs> no, my family and that. Well, I'm sure he's always, watching this. My family, are always, my family are just like, you know what, David, whatever you want to do, you do it. Because they know me anyway. I'm that kind of man. If I want to do something, I'm doing it. If I don't, I ain't mm. doing it for nothing. So... They, I passed all the medicals and stuff, so there was no, there was nothing anyone could say to you. You can't box; it's not safe. Because as long as you're passing medicals and stuff, there's no reason why you shouldn't box. You know, there's no medical reason. No one comes to me and say you shouldn't be boxing because of this because I passed everything. So, no, no one really. You know, Rob Tebbit was always the main one that said, "David, I'd like to get out of it because there's so much more you can do outside. You can do other things. You don't need to fight all your life." And, and others as well as Rob and Darren Barker as well. I shook his hand off the price fight and said, I promise I'll never box again. And I did, but uh, I promise I won't do it again. And there was people like that. But uh, there were times where I thought I had something left in the tank, to be honest. I was sparring you sick. I was sparring amazingly well. And obviously he caught me with that shot. I weren't, I weren't even bothered about that, to be honest, because that's boxing. It happens. But it, but but really, it was what happened. A few things happened since the U6 bar that made me think, you know what, I ain't got it anymore. And uh, that, I, that's enough for me just to say, all right, I'm stopping. So obviously, let's talk about that use of spar. That video's gone viral now. Yeah, I well, you knew it was going to go viral. I don't give a fuck because it's sparring, right? I've knocked out hundreds of men in sparring. Mm-hmm. I don't. Well, who cares? This is boxing. The use of in the end is going to happen. You know, I got done by Usyk, one of the best fighters. He'll be one of the best fighters ever, in my opinion. Can't be a good shot. <laughs> well done, mate. Nice one. Do you know what I mean? He's lucky he didn't try and finish me off. I'd have fucking, I'd have fucking done him. I'd have done it. He knows it as well. That's why I fucking backed off. But, um, but you know everyone who's watching that video is asking, why was Dave Allen I'll tell you walking why. towards you I'll tell you why. with his hands down? Let he release the first few rounds. We'd see Dave Allen from Doncaster out boxing all the time. see. He was knackered because he'd been training all week, <laughs> sparring all week. I was a second sparring partner. Confidence sky high. I was Ali shuffling in. Couldn't miss him. <laughs> Doing amazing. And then, I, and then I just switched off, and he's like, "I'm gonna fucking get you back," and he fucking chin me. But um, I don't, I you know, I've got no, I don't have an ego, me. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I'm, it is what it is. Everything is what it is. I got done with a shot. What I'm gonna do? Lie about it and cover it up to to, to keep my ego intact. I'm not bothered. Is what it is. He caught me with a good shot. Congratulations. I had a call to him. I was like, Alexander, oh, release it, please. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> It happened. The moment he hit me with it, it's my fault with it, and 
people say, oh, why are you releasing that? It's not very nice to see. Who gives a fuck? This is, this is what it is. It's boxing. It could be a good shot. Well done to him. But what, what do you want me to say? I don't care. You've done me. So what? Well done. See, I know you, and I know when you um, when you post, so you just post stuff. You just put it up, mm. you know, and not put that like, thought into it. So did you ask, did you say to somebody, I think I'm going to put up this music video, or did you just do it? I just did it. It is what it is. What it is. I got done with the left hand, so what? Didn't go over, continued the round, finished the round. He wouldn't have finished in the month for fucking Sundays. Let's have that correct. No way to put me over. He wouldn't have put me over at all. Not in a month of Sundays would I have gone over. But uh, I'm not bothered. Like, people say, oh, my God, why would you put that on? It makes you look bad. I'm not bothered. So what? Got done with a punch. I'm not bothered. You know, That's like, a good oh, way to look at us. A lot of people say negative things to me. Like, and I think the only people that would say, oh, my God, Dave, how long you walk in with your hands shut? With your hands down, all this. I think I'd fucking bat you with both my eyes shut <laughs> and my arms and legs tied together. And I'll still find a way to fucking bat you with, fucking, with that said. So I don't give a fuck for their for what they're saying. It is it's what it is. I just hate. I just hate stuff like that. I just think, you know what? What does it matter? You know, we're brave enough to do it. You know, when people get on the TV and people take the piss out of them, I just think it really riles me. I think they're in their train and they've got they've got done by a better man. So, so what? So this week, give us a kind of breakdown of timeline of events. What was what was the conversation or what was the moment where you're like, right, that's it. I'm done. I'm going to have to call Eddie. Or who did you call? I know you spoke to your sister, Danielle. Yep. Well, who I, else did you speak to? Like I said, since the prize fight, it's been in my mind to retire. You know, to be done with it. I've not really sparred since. Yusit was the first real proper sparring I've had since. Mm-hmm. I've sparred fighters like uh, pro heavyweights that I've had between 0 and 10 fights. I sparred a British cruiserweight challenger. But I played with all of them because people always say to me, Dave, oh, you're not very good, you're not this and that. If you're not a top class heavyweight and I'm in good shape, you've got to be real top class, otherwise, I'll, otherwise I can more than comfortably hold my own with you. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've not sparred anyone top, top class or been in the ring with anyone top, top class since David Price, all the time they use it. So um, I was thinking I'm going to retire, but I'd not been in with anyone, so, so I was feeling fine because I was sparring against people that were way below my level. And I was just, just getting... It's easy, to be honest. It's easy for me. Um, that's one thing that does right. People say, David Allen can't fight. I got to top 15 in the world without fucking training. I can't be that bad. I've never even trained today half the time. I've probably only trained six months out of the last 12 years and still got top 15 in the world somehow. So it comes very easy to me, especially when I'm going in there to actually take the piss and not actually win rounds and sparring just to do it. It's easy. So I was thinking, you know what, maybe I can get a box down in darts and... That's down a few levels again. It was easy. Um, so I think, you know what? I think I'll just get a few wins. When the Hammer fight came up, I was really upset about it because I thought Hammer would beat me, to be honest. But I was well, you, did, you said this on the last time we spoke. Yeah. When we spoke two weeks ago when the Love Joy fight fell through. Yeah. And you're like, well, I'm glad that the Hammer fight fell through because I knew I wasn't going to win it. People Which is the that. wrong way, people, wrong thing to think going into a fight people with saying, People saying, oh, David, I don't fight anybody. Well, I won't set the Fabio Wardy fight on 10 days' notice. The stupid bastards. I told the Christian Hammer fight fucking six weeks earlier, who was better than Fabio Wardley and all the rest of them anyway. And I took that fight. I had an hamstring tear and not run for six weeks before. I weren't fit when I went to Ukraine to spar you six because I'd done my leg. Not done a thing. I looked in good shape, but I weren't eating. I weren't fit, to be honest. I still weren't fit because I was fit in August. I was fit as a fiddler. I was ready to fight in August. I was 100% ready to go. But come October, just gone. I wasn't fit. I wasn't fit. When I sparred Juicy, I wasn't fit. I tore my hamstring. And a few people messaged me. And they were like, Dave, we know you're not fit. A few people messaged me. I don't know who they are. And they were like, Dave, we know you're not fit. You've done your hamstring. You're not trained for a while. You're not trained. Oh, you're Mr. James. I was not trained. I was just eating well. I looked good, but I weren't fit at all. And uh, so when the hammer fight fell through, I was relieved. I got Lovejoy. I thought, Lovejoy's, Lovejoy's a prick as well. He's talking bollocks again. But uh, anyway, so I was so relieved hammer fell through because I would have got beat by him. I'd have fucking tried my bollocks off 100%. I'd have tried. But uh, I weren't confident. And the Lovejoy, Lovejoy fight fell through. And... Uh, 
And to be honest, I, the, the, what happened this week is I, I wanted to box on the show and I was saying to Eddie, Eddie kept giving me names and he kept, he'd give me a few names. I said, Ed, he'll beat me. He will beat me. He will beat me. And Ed's going there shit. And I say to him all the time, Ed, I don't like when people say they're no good because they are good. He said Pavel Sauer, who Hugh Fury shots in three. Pavel Sauer is not a world beater, but he, he's, he's not bad at all. He's a big man. He can box. He's experienced. And I knew he would have beat me Saturday if I had a boxing. So, and Ed was like, well, years ago, you just box anybody. And I thought, yeah, I would. And I thought, I thought yeah, it's gone. My bottle's gone. Whether I've made a few quid or whatever, I don't know. But uh, me, me, not in, I don't even want to fight. I don't, I, fight, I don't even want to fucking fight. The last thing I want to do is get punched in the gob. I'd be really upset if someone punched me now. It'd upset me. <laughs> I really don't want it at all. I mean, if I have to, I'll, I'll get on with it and scrap. <laughs> I don't want to have a choice. Do you think that, would you put that down to, well, what would you put that down to? What do you think has changed that now you don't want to get punched in the face anymore? I mean, I understand why you wouldn't. Yeah. But, you know, was there, is there a defining moment? I'm a different man now to what I used to be. Uh, I was brought up uh, by my old man. I was brought up hard, to be honest. It was hard. Uh, I never got credit for nothing. I never had anything. I was brought up in a council house. My dad never worked a day in his life. I've never seen him work. My mum struggled all the time. I never had nothing. And so when I got a little bit older... If it wasn't for boxing, I would have had nothing at all. I would never had nothing. I would live the same life as my dad. So, and 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 even that, it never he never gave me a work ethic, but um, it was I was in, it was installed in me to be tough. My old man did fucking batter me as a kid. I was tough. I was not a kid because I had to be hard to survive my life at home. To be honest, and as I got older, um, and I got a bit bigger, my dad stopped hitting me and that, but. Like life never was never got easier. Life was hard as a kid because uh, we 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 had fuck all. To be honest, I had nothing. We had nothing, and I always wanted something. I always wanted to be a somebody. So, so when I had the fights, even against the French champion for B. Sam Young, it was an horrible fight. It was hard. Uh, I got through that. The Dylan White Lewis Ortiz fight. I had no money. I had nothing. I was in debt with gambling, and all left until after the prize fight, I had nothing. After the price in the brown fight, I had some money, I had my house bought, I had a few things going on. And uh, and and I finally just, I think I finally said to myself, you know what, I've, I've done it, I'm happy. I've got so much to show for it. And uh, and I've done it. I felt like I'd done it. And it all left me. And I think what made me tough was uh, a bit of resentment and a bit of, and I just wanted to do it so bad that it died. I'd have honestly, I'd have honestly happily died uh, at times early in my career just to fucking, you know, you watch Lewis Ortiz fight. I was getting fucking hammered. I weren't fit, but I, I wasn't going nowhere. I want to stop. You want to, you want to stop me in a million years? I'd have thought, and I still like you sit not me unconscious. And I still fucking boxing him. Still spot, I still spot. He's still up snoring. It's in me. He's, he's fucking ingrained in me from the old man. But, uh, but that's the difference. I'd, years ago, I'd have fucking died to fight anyone you know but now I, I don't want to it's not in, I'm not angry anymore I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't that's huge yeah I feel miles better as well I'm not, like, I'm not angry anymore pe people pay therapists a lot of money to get to that stage <laughs> where they no longer feel angry about their childhood and things that have happened to them growing up you know yeah I'm not I'm just not angry anymore I feel better in every in every aspect as well I'm always going to be a bit a bit eccentric and the wheels are always going to fall off a little bit. But uh, but the bottom is I'm not I'm not angry anymore. And I think my toughness was fueled a lot by uh, by uh, by a bit of resentment and a bit of anger, to be honest. Well, how would you or what advice would you give to somebody that is experiencing those things and is finding it hard to let them go and don't have the luxury of a professional boxing career? Well, you got to channel something into it. You got you got to channel it. I was lucky at sixteen and a half. I found boxing, and uh, I wanted to make myself. I wanted to make something of it and prove, prove, prove me old man really. You know, for the last for the last for, mm. not the last year, but the, the the eleven years before last year, I just wanted to fucking say, you know what? Look what I've done. You know, I've done better than you as well. While well, I've been at it, 
you haven't done that good, but I fucking pissed all over yours, you know. So I, I'm, so anyone that's feeling like that, just fucking go to, go to channel it, you know. I've not trained the artist, but I fucking every time I went in the ring, I did. Um, I've been very smart. Uh, I just I've just fucking channeled I channeled that into something good, and and I'm where I am today because. There's been times where I've let it chew me up, you know what I mean? As I've been through many times before, I've been a self armor, try try killing myself as well on one occasion and, and uh but uh but but ninety percent of the time I've always been channeling into trying to trying to create something and I've created it and it's been in and I and I'm only halfway through it now, so I've got the rest of my life to go through, training, managing, hopefully a job matchmaking for Eddie and Reality TV, it's all going to come together. And I'll probably, I'll probably make more money and do more interesting things after the boxing's finished, but... No, actually, you're going matchmaking for matchroom. Well, I'm, I'm applying, don't worry about that. Get out. I'm trying, I'm trying, don't worry. I'm applying for the licence, and Eddie will be getting, a, getting more <laughs> text from me now than he was before. <laughs> okay, before we talk about what you're going to go into afterwards, let's talk about when you made the announcements. Yeah. Could you have anticipated... The response that that got. Well, you know what? I, I had two cries. I've retired before, you know what I mean? Like a spirit of the moment, like, oh, I'm done, I'm done, I fuck this, I can't be bothered. You know what I mean? Things aren't going your yeah. way or whatever. But uh, I spoke to I spoke to a few people, and they knew, they, 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 they knew it was real this time. Like, this, this, I'm actually retired, you know? Before I was spitting the dummy out, but this time, like, I've retired, I'm done with it, and uh, some of my childhood heroes are my mates now. Some like child, you. Some is like, you know, like the likes of um, Tyson Fury, you know, even, even like Derek Chisora. These, these are heroes to me. I'm, when I'm first starting boxing, 16, 17, they're fighting for the British title on Channel 5. You know, you've got David A, um, even Eddie, you've got all the biggest names in boxing, like my heroes as kids. And they're saying, oh, what a great career you've had. We've really enjoyed watching you. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because to me, I'm still, even though I'm 28 now, I'm still like, you know, I don't think you ever grow up from being 17, do you? I, I think I'm going to be 17. I'm 17 forever. I'll never grow up. I still feel 17. When I'm around them people, I still feel it. So when I see them saying good things about me, it's unbelievable. And I've read lots of things. You know, David Arnold's been one of the biggest parts of British boxing in the last five or ten years. And then they broke, they broke it down for me. Like, and there's a... He taught everyone how to use social media and in boxing. He had landed the O2. He's done this. And that, I thought, you know what? And then I sat back and I thought, fucking hell, I've fucking had a right career, really. I'm not even on the belt, but I thought, fucking hell, I've actually done well, you know? And, uh,. So I'm really, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm really proud, you know. I wish I'd have done more, and I'm sure every, even Floyd Mayweather probably looks back and think, well, I wish I'd have done this or done that, never mind me. So, but uh, I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon with it. I'm I'm really glad, and I'm glad I made the decision that I made. When I, what I said to you last night was, um, I hope that I hope that you feel loved, because you are. The like it's just so much, so much love for you everywhere. The comments, the messages, the tweets, everything. Yeah, it's mad, you know. Obviously, some negativity always there, and you know it's human nature. You look at negativity and you get more to be attention there. than you should. But uh, mm. well, I I sold. We're selling hundreds of hundreds of items on the website of my my clothing after I've retired. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, so but it's re the stuff is really nice, so that's why. Really nice. Yeah, but yeah. I put the link up, and I just put <laughs> someone has to put the link up, and I thought, oh, maybe he'll get one, and maybe one or two others. We're talking, we're gonna end up in the hundreds and thousands of things going out, and I just think that's fucking mental, isn't it? Like, um, so I said the other day, I drive, I drive, I wouldn't swap, I wouldn't swap the relationship I have with all the people for for a world title, and I mean it, I wouldn't, I genuinely wouldn't, I would not. Uh, there's certain world champions that have been world champions the last couple of years, and it sounds horrible, but no one gives a fuck about them. And I wouldn't swap their world title for what I've got, you know? Why do you think so many people love the White Rhino? Just a likeable shitbag, aren't I? Like, I'm just, 
I'm I'm like well, like everyone's got on the on the estate or on the street, you know. I'm there's, there's one of me everywhere, isn't there? But uh, but I but I but I but I but I've been and done some good things, and everyone looks at me as the mate, and they're like, well, yeah, look how Dave's on tonight. My mate, he, he's fighting tonight. You know, Dave Allen, yeah, he's fighting, yeah. And I think, and that's great because I think there's one there's one of me everywhere. You know what I mean? Yes, there's a Dave Allen in every on every street corner. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Lydia on every street corner. As well. No, I didn't. And um, so yeah, it 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 it, it means. Uh, <laughs> Like I said, I got into boxing. I got into boxing really as a really. I was a shy kid, really. When I went to London Ingalls Gym when I first went, I didn't speak to anyone for about a month. And uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted my old man to to be proud of me. And I just wanted people to like me. I wanted. I used to. I remember used to walk to the mum. Uh, walk my mum to the shop as a kid. And we'd always. And we'd always. We'd always talk about what I'm going to do when I was older. What I wanted to be. And what I always said was, I want to be a somebody. One day, I just want to. I want to be a someone. I want people to say, just I want to just be somebody. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't just want to go through life. I just want some people just to like me and be like, oh, David Allen, yeah, he's good at this or good at that. Probably football at the time. And um, so I'm 28 year old, and and we've done it. We've cracked it. And um, didn't your mum always tell you that you're special? Yeah, very special. Yeah, she said I'm very special. <laughs> but uh, no, I think I was always my old man always thought I'd be a somebody because I was always I was running six minute miles at ten years old and um, I was just I was always, I was a great athlete. I was doing track and field and I wasn't the greatest footballer, but I was good because I was a good athlete. And um, my dad, yeah, I was always expected to do something like my PE teacher. I was always expected to go and do something good with sport. The foot boxing would have been the last one they would have guessed because I've never even done it till I left school. But um, I always anticipated doing something. And you know what the funny thing is? What? I always thought I would achieve more as an athlete than I have. But I would never dreamed of <laughs> being doing as well as I've done in terms of people liking me and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I always thought, I thought I'd been a world-class athlete or whatever sport I'd have turned me on to. And I haven't been, to be honest. But, but I've achieved more than I ever thought I would have done through in a way that I never thought people would have ever liked me. So it, it's mad, really. Dave, have you ever asked your dad, is he proud of you? No, because we don't talk about things like that. Well, why don't you? Because we don't talk about things. We only talk We talk about three things, and that's it. Three things only. We talk about boxing, horse racing. No, probably two, actually. I can't even think of a third one. We talk about boxing and horse racing. I can't remember a conversation about anything else ever in my life. Well, Would you it? could say, are you proud of what I've achieved in boxing? I'm never asking that. I would never ask you. Why? We don't have that kind of relationship, to be honest. We don't talk about things like that. We don't talk about feelings. We uh, in my old man, in it? But, uh, but, uh, but, but that's... Uh, I won't say that sick, because he's me. I love him as my dad, but uh, you know, that's, <laughs> that's probably that. That's what I say on the mind. Well, you do seem very happy since this weekend. I'm very happy. I'm ecstatic, to be honest. So you're you. I mean, I don't have to ask, but confirm our thoughts that this is 100 percent the right decision. No regrets. No, not at all. You, you know what the thing is. Go on. I know it's over. As a fighter, I'm done. God, that made me a little sad. I'm a, uh, it's a, I'm done. I'm I'm finished. There's nothing left. Oh, don't say that. Come on, I'm going to start crying here. No, no, it's just... a chapter of your life that's over, but there's a lot no. more to come. Do you know what the thing is? Yeah, from being 16, I sparred I sparred five six hundred rounds with Anthony Joshua. Same with Fury. I sparred a lot with Dylan White. I sparred a lot with all the world class heavyweights. I've had 25 pro fights. Ten of them I've took fucking unbelievable stick. The human body only, only can take so much. And uh, I was speaking to Reese Blotty earlier, and, I said, and he was like, What do you think punch distance is? And I said, You know, like street fight, you've got a health bar. And that's what? what a human. You know, you've got like a health bar in like, you know, in PlayStation games, you've got a health bar. When that goes, you're gone. Right. And I think that's what I've got. I've had a health bar, and every time I've been it on the chin, 
a little bit goes off every time you get it. Every hard spar you have, a little bit of your health bar goes or an hard fight or whatever. And my, mine, the little red bit at the bottom, you know? But it doesn't mean I'm not finished as a man. I'm just finished as a fighter. I'm, I'm, it's not there anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just not there. I just don't want to box. Okay. Luckily, so before... look, luckily, I'm still a big kid, you know what I mean? So if anyone wants to start, I'm still good to go. But <laughs> as, far, as far as mend my own size, I'm going to go, I'm done. <laughs> before I take a look at uh, fan questions, because there is a lot that are in the box, um, let's talk about future plans. Is anything after developing since the weekend? Or where is your heart lying? Well, I've Obviously, the, the call has been for punditry. Yeah, well, I've texted him about eight times about a job. Has he replied? Says we'll talk. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I fully expect <laughs> something, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you know, punditry, anything like I think I'll be good at it. He's very hard on Sky, but, you know, he frotches your values. Mm-hmm. They've been to the top of the game and done it and seen it all. But uh, I think this guy wants something different. I know what I'm on with, you know what I mean? I know the game inside out. I've talked very well. Uh, I think I'm quite funny. Whether if I'm too honest or not, maybe I am. Cause I'm, I, won't, I won't lie just to suit the agenda. But uh, I think I'd be really good at it, to be honest. Um, I'm going to do the boxing, the training, the managing. You know, mm-hmm. that's that. Uh, well, you did. The last time we had you on, you were very passionate in speaking about management and fees and, you know, yeah. young fighters and stuff. So after we spoke, there were so many messages from people saying, like, Dave spoke so well and so passionately about that. He really should consider doing it a little bit more. Well, I talked Daniel Morel from Jane and Amateur to, like, this next big thing as a pro. So I'm not bad as a trainer, I don't think. You know what I mean? So... I enjoy the training, so I want to do that. The managing, I feel like, is something I should do because I feel like I can do a lot of good for people with that, you know? I think uh, I've talked to a good friend of mine about getting into managing. He's a former world champion himself, world professional boxing champion. One of the nicest men I met in boxing, me and him. I'd like to, I'd like to do something with him, managing fighters with him. Because I think we can do a lot of good. And So there's that, there's reality TV. Any process. names, any shows in particular? I'm in the process of getting an agent currently. Uh, yeah, so Ooh. I've been offered I've been offered quite a lot of things while I've been boxing, but I've always said no because I didn't want to be I didn't want to be that guy that was boxing that was doing stuff like that. But now, I mean, it's like it's a job in it. I, I don't really want to do it, but it's a job. Straight to come dancing, I'll do hundred <laughs> percent. But uh, <laughs> um, what's the one on the ice skates? No, I wouldn't do that. Dancing with ice. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't ask it. I just probably struggle. But, um, <laughs> yeah, there's so many things, and like, I want to open a gym. I want to, I want to do loads of things. And when I was boxing, it was all like, I'll do it when I finish. I finish now, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do all of it, you know. And if none of that comes off, I'm gonna go and work for Sinclair's and Florian labouring. So, uh, so <laughs> yeah, we'll do some will come. I'll do something anyway. The best resin floor in all of. North in England, Yorkshire, in Yorkshire, Yorkshire. Yorkshire. If, not the world, if not the world. That's my <laughs> slogan. I made up as well. Like, not the um, great stuff. Will we have a look at the questions. Okay, you know the drill. Chat amongst yourself. Talk to them as I go into the question boxes. There's so many. Okay, straight away. There's one here from Derry Matthews. Yep. He said, uh, "Been a credit to the sport, Dave. Going on." Going on with a smile on your face and your marble still intact, go manage and train some fighters. It's from Derry Matthews. Oh, Very nice Derry message. Ma- Derry Matthews, uh, another great fighter, you know. I remember watching Derry I've never been on a fight. I remember, I think, I can't remember it boxing. I was, it's bad that I mentioned this, but it was a fight that he lost. But I think it might have been like 2007. I've never even watched boxing before, you know. And Derry Matthews, uh, Derry Matthews had a great career. And Derry Matthews had a bit of a blip and he came back and he ends up smashing it in the end. He came back and had a great run. What a great fighter. And again, when people like that will say nice things about me, it's amazing, you know? So I've been a fan of Derry Matthews before I even put a pair of boxing gloves on. So, he, you know what I mean? Like, it's just amazing. And I really like Derry Matthews and I, I really appreciate that message as well. Thank you very much. So do I. He's a great, great man. Um, Ad Spence has asked, can you please ask Dave if he thinks he might miss punching people in the face for a living? No, because I'm going to still body spar. 
and I'm going to make sure I do it with low-level kids and drop them all the time. I'm going to keep that confidence high. You know what I mean? So that's the plan there. <laughs> um, okay, let me have a little look. I don't want to repeat any questions. A lot of them are asking about the youth expiring. A lot are asking about uh, new jobs in the pipeline, but we've obviously just spoke yeah. about that. Um, Asa Davis has asked, what, what's the one thing you think you will miss the most about boxing now that you're retired? I don't think I'll miss anything because I'll do everything, I'll do everything that I was doing anyway. You know what? I, said, I spoke to Chris Bill and Smith, and um, me and Chris was on the GB assessments together. And there was eight of us to start with. And Chris had a notepad. And if he ate something or he trained, he'd write it down. I attempted to the GB assessments three stone overweight. Um, and he had a notepad writing everything down. Anyway, so I got a place on the squad. Three stone overweight, still got, still got offered a place on the Great Britain squad. Chris got sent out. So he texted him last night at the time. And I texted him and I said, Chris... Thank you very much. And it's great to see all your hard work's paid off. And he said to me, well, you were a great athlete, Dave, and, and uh, you had the confidence I never had. And I said, Chris, if I had your dedication, I could have been one of the best athletes in the world. But I never, and I never missed anything. I, I lived a normal life. I lived a normal life. I've never gone without eating anything I wanted to. I only really run three times a year. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I don't miss anything from boxing. People say, oh, Bet you can eat what you want now, Dave. Or I bet you glad you have to run in the morning. I never fucking did it anyway. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, never, I, never, I, never, I never did any of that stuff anyway. So I, uh, I, I, won't, I won't miss anything. I'm not glad to be done because I'm getting anything. People will say it's a shame, but I, I don't think so. I, well, I've, I've just burnt the candle at both ends. <laughs> and now, now, now it's burnt out a little bit early because of that. But, <laughs> I can't, I can't knock anything. I've, 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 uh, I won't miss it because I want to continue to keep training. I'm still going to be around it. I just won't have to deal with getting punched anymore. It should be amazing. Absolutely. Uh, here is good, a really good question actually from Stevie Belter, and he has asked, "What was your favourite press conference that you were involved in?" I like, I like getting on with everybody. To be honest, I didn't like the uh, argument. I had a good one with Dylan White. Um, and I remember before the press conference, Coogan came up to me and Eddie just texted me and he wanted to wind Dylan White up. I don't fucking ask. Do I have to? <laughs> I don't really want to. You know, yeah, so that was a good one. That was a fun one. Um, then he stuck, me, he stuck it in on me at the press conference after. And I thought, I needed the money. I thought, oh God, I thought, don't start on me because if the fight gets cold, I want to be skinned. So, um, so that that was a good one. The Lenroy Thomas one was a good one. I, I always like getting on with I always like getting on with my opponent because um we're doing each other a favour. I always say when you're boxing when you're doing them a favour, you're doing each other a favour. You find each other, you're gonna get paid, one of you's gonna go on to the next level and do great things. So I always like boxing people that I like because if they beat me I wanted to be really happy for them, you know. So I don't really like boxing people that I didn't like. So I like the press conferences that were just nice and humorous. So my favourite my favourite one was probably uh I really like Lucas Brown, to be honest. He's a nice guy. He still seems like he's a, a, a very big fan of yours. Big fan, yeah. Big fan. Big fan. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's some good, there's really good questions tonight. It's actually really good. I think they're terrified that you're never going to be on here again, Dave. Um, so this is from Mousy number six. And he, I think it is, I can't really see his icon, but he said... Um, did meeting Michael Watson have an effect on you mentally? Yes, and then he says, but... before he answers, he says, big, big fan, by the way, good luck to you in life. You motivated me to pick up boxing at the age of 30. Thank you very much. It's lovely. And I spoke to Rob Tebbett earlier, and I said to him, yeah, Michael Watson was a big part of it, because when I met Well, that's him... a great interview. It's for anyone that doesn't know, you, um, Michael Watson, and Rob Tebbett from Boxing Social done a three-way interview. It was incredible. It was good, and yeah, you know what? Me and Michael uh, played. Not, I won't say he played a factor in it, but it made me think, "Fucking, hell, I've been lucky, really." <laughs> you know, the price fight. I don't think people understand like how bad it was. It could have been really bad, you know. Um, that and the German girl, like Eva, as well. That played a little part, and she has to go to the hospital. And I thought, "Fucking hell!" I thought, 
brought back by memories. I thought, do I really want to do this? Mm. You know? So, uh, between the two of them things, it brought it back a little bit. To it, 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 yeah, a little, played a little part, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Cool. Okay. Um, Laura Orr, 19, has asked, do you have any regrets? Zero. Zero regrets. Good stuff. I never fucking trained for some fights at all. But I don't regret it because it's what I want to do. Everything I've ever done in my life, I've done loads of things. I look back now and think, God, I wish I'd never done it. Never, oh, why have I done that? Don't, re- don't mean I regret it, though. Because I wanted to do it at the time. You know, I've been with some of the ugliest women in the world. But at the time, I wanted to do it. I don't regret them because they were good to me at the time. You know, as soon as as soon as I go, oh, oh, as soon as that happened, I go, oh god, what have I done? But I don't regret it. Do you know what I mean? So, I guess boxing and training is exactly the same as them birds. <laughs> I, 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 can't it, I can't put it any other way. Come on, well, flipping hell. Okay, um, as a, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Can I just say? Anyway, uh, this is from L Crags, and they have asked, uh, "Good to hear that you've retired. All the best in the future. But in all seriousness, will you be pursuing a career in wrestling? Your debut could be against Anthony Agogo at AEW." Hey, I, I love the wrestling, but I'd never do it. It's too, Why? It's Why? Too much tra- it's too much traveling for me. Traveling? Yeah, well, yeah, fair I enough. Don't, I, don't, I don't want to do that. No, to be honest. I love the wrestling. It's not what it used to be. I'll just watch it from on YouTube from ninety eight to two thousand two. Very interesting. <laughs> What's your favourite wrestling event? Well, well WrestleMania seventeen I think is the greatest pay per view of all time. Who was on who who headlined WrestleMania seventeen? Uh it was Rock Austin. I think it was Rock Austin two at WrestleMania. Um you know, it had the first ever um, I think was it the first ever? No, I don't think it was the first ever. It had the uh, the TLC match, Hardys, as in Christian and Dudley Boys, the debut of Rhino, also Lee was involved, also Spike Dudley, also Big Show, uh, Raven, Kane, Harkos, Hart match, also Undertaker and Triple H. You know, great show it was. Still remember it like it was yesterday, even though I was actually nine years old. And I was 42. <laughs> 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 um, SW Stewart has asked if you could pick any heavyweight boxer past or present to have boxed against in your career who would it be and why yeah, I, you know what I, I would have wanted to box Anthony Joshua me and uh, you know me over the years people think I really dislike him and you know what I mean we probably don't have him we probably aren't each other as big as fans these days but uh, before the Olympics, I started sparring before the Olympics, and we sparred a lot. And we went on to spar for the next three or four years, and I was always there. Every time he rang me, I'd go to Sheffield and spar him. Every time, I'd have a broken nose more often than not when I'd spar him. Um, but I'd go and do it. Cause I fought a lot of him, you know. And uh, and over the years, when when well, I won't say we fell out, but we 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 ended up probably having a bit of dislike towards each other. Me, because I never got paid a penny, didn't get expenses covered to spar him. And as I got older, I realised I took him out. I had broken, I had broken noses, and 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 I was really, I was really badly hurt and injured, and I still continued to have me up and spar ten rounds. And looking back now, I took advantage of him. He didn't even pay me either. So I had bad feeling towards him, and you know his team that was up there, and I still lose to this day. I feel like they took the piss out of me, to be honest. And to this day, if he apologised and. I'd, I'd probably I'd say you know all right fair enough I don't think he's a bad fella at all I, quite, I got on well I got on with him really well but uh, as I got older I thought you know what he took the fucking piss out of me to be honest and I didn't like it um, but uh, have you I ever was, said that to him? The last thing we've seen each other the last time we've seen each other uh, he was going around the gym he was shaking everyone's hands saying hello to everybody hugging him and that and he saw me and we kind of looked at each other and shook each other's hand without even looking at each other. You know, like one of them, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah, fuck off. <laughs> one of them, you know. But uh, I don't just like the fella. People can go, I don't, we used to get on really well. But that just, uh, but I'm that kind of bloke, me. Everything's got to be proper and right, and you got to be right with people. So that, 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 mm-hmm. that's, you know, now like, nah, I'm done with the box, and I can, that, that was the problem. That was, that was always been the problem with me over the years. I took it very personally. But, um, 
he was one I wanted to box because when we first started sparring, he used to say to me, "Oh, you could be, the, you could be the champ, you can be the world champion to train because you can be the, you can be the one of the best ways in the world." We'll box each other one day. He said that to me once, like seven years ago, and uh, I never listened. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but yeah, you know. So uh, he would have been the one. He was the one I always dreamed of fighting. Great answer. Okay. Um, Billy Crookson has asked, "Will you go back to coaching Danny now that you've got more free time?" No, because I did a great job with Danny. Because, like I said, it was an absolutely shite journey of an amateur when I met him. To be honest, we had a lot of talent. I took him on, and I, I, I sp- you know what? I must have spent tens of thousands of pounds on him overall. Train journeys, hotels, gloves, fucking all sorts of food, especially the fat little bastard. <laughs> but the fortune on him. <laughs> and it was worth it for the other night because the other night's work was was three years of my hard work on him all came together, you know. But yeah, I yeah. don't know enough about diet, yeah. I don't know enough about strength conditioning, and I don't have world class fighters in the gym for him to learn and bounce off. Dave, do you know that Dominic Ingle has Danny cracking not only his own eggs but separating egg whites yeah, I've seen from it, the yeah. earth? And I can't do Incredible. that. Incredible. I, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I can teach Danny how to box. Like I can, I've taught him how to box. I can do that. I can make anyone a half-decent boxer. I can make anyone a good boxer that's got the uh, ability to pick things up and do it like Danny has, you know. I can't mm-hmm. take a random fellow making good if he ain't got no ability because it's impossible to do. No one could do it. Mm-hmm. But with yeah. Danny, Danny needs to know, Danny needs to get his food right. He needs to do some conditioning right. He needs to be around uh, world class fighters day in day out. You know, in terms of learning from them, uh, both, you know, being around kid Galahad every day, he's he enough to train like Barry. He learn, he will learn. That's what you got to do to get to the top. So because them three things alone, I said to him, "You're gonna have to go, mate." To be honest, I said, "I said there's no, there's no better coach in the world." Like everyone, everyone's. I know my boxing the same way Dom knows it, the same way Jamie knows it. We all know it the same way. We all teach it differently, but we all know we all we all know what we're on with, you know. Mm-hmm. We've not gone to Dom because Dom knows boxing better than me. But Dom's a better coach than me because Dom knows his food, he knows his strength conditioning, he knows how to get someone ready for a fight with a couple of weeks to go. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. experience. Dom's got the experience. So I said, Danny, you're gonna have to go up there, mate, and. You know, at first you didn't really want to, but I said, Dan, I said, you're going to have to go because for the best. Mm-hmm. You know? And when he goes up to Dom's, I'll go up to Dom's out for a couple of days a week and I'll watch how Dom gets people ready for fights in the last couple of weeks. And I said, right, that's how you do that then. You know, I'll see what Danny's eating. I'll look at his diet plan and go, right, well, let me take that, Danny, because I'm going to give that to my kids that I'm going to train from now. And then, you know, look at the same conditioning. Right, that's what they need to be doing, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping to be around Dom, I'm hoping to go through to James and, and learn from these people. Because as I say, not necessarily boxing knowledge, but there's so much more than knowing boxing and being a coach. Yeah. You know? So that's why he's there. And I, I'm basically, MTK managed Danny, but I'm basically his manager. You know, I saw his fault, I saw his fight the other night. You know, I saw everything behind the scenes, sponsors, uh, his opponent, when he's going to box. I text Eddie seven times a day if he can get on the show. I do all that stuff. So while I'm not training him because Dom can do a better job than me with that, I'm still involved in all the other stuff. And uh, I want him to be Danny Morrell. I don't want him to be Dave Allen's mate. I want him to be Danny Morrell. So I'm happy just to sit back, do all the stuff that helps him out, but not necessarily be involved and just let him be his old man. It's a good plan. Akib Fiaz has said, Great person and attitude will be a top coach. I like Akib, you know, he's an nice. I like Akib as well. Good very, very nice. Well, but, uh, very good fighter. But yeah, the reason, you know, you know, the, my dad used to say to me as a kid, there's nothing new under the sun, yeah? Let's say that again, there's nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun. That's a good one. There's nothing new under the sun, is there? Nothing new. Like, everything that's happening now, all these things, they're from, they're from millions of years, from thousands of years ago. So, the things that Brendan Ingle told me at 16, then Dominic, Peter Fury, Mick Marsden, Darren Barker, Jamie Moore, you know. Or when I'm training fighters now, I say things. I'm just saying things that Jamie said to me, or Peter said to me, or Dominic, or Brendan. There's nothing new under the sun. You know, if it's worked before, it'll work again. 
and things that haven't worked before, they won't work. They won't work again for the same reason they didn't work the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, training fighters is so easy. You know, if you know, take what your way for this. Well, there's so many. No, you know what? In boxing, there's so many fucking idiots. There's so many fucking strength and conditioning people that have got a fucking personal training certificate and think they're a boxing trainer to put a pair of fucking pads on. They ain't got a fucking clue. So uh, it's the same with the managers. There's so many fucking fucking shitty ass businessmen. They ain't boxing, man. So fuck off. But um, <laughs> tell us how you really feel. That is how I feel. <laughs> boxing, but boxing, boxing is a, boxing is for boxing and for boxing people. You know, I don't. I don't like. I don't like personal trainers being boxing teachers, and I don't like businessmen only bothered about money coming in boxing management. Mm-hmm. So I feel about it, you know. But it's happening; and it'll continue to happen. But uh, but a small, but the small percentage of fighters that I'm hoping to take on, they'll be all right because they'll have to buy me. And like I said, I'm not the smartest one of those, and all the rest of it. But I've got a big heart and I know the crack, so. Thank you, Akib, is what I'm trying to say. But Thank you, Akib, yes. Fucking, fucking clowns that are fucking involved in the sport as well. Um, Dean from Emperor Pro Tape has said, does Dave know that you're moving to Mexborough? <laughs> yeah, you I'm going to show, I'm gonna show Lydia that thing that I did earlier. What thing? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Too many people you're getting married. Things. You're getting married when you get here, you know? Don't, that? don't, please don't say that because... The, the messages will go absolutely nuts. Um, right, we'll take one or two more and then I will let you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Adam MK55 and he has said, um, one thing you would change about your career days and happy retirement, best of luck in the future. Thank you very much. I would probably, um, I would change, change train really from Michael Marsden. Michael's a great friend of mine and a good coach, but uh, we're probably two good friends, really. I called him Uncle Mick, you know what I mean? That's how close we are. We're so close now to this day, you know. Um, I had a heavyweight come to me the other week, a good heavyweight, and said, what do you think, Dave? I'm looking for a trainer and a manager. Are you interested? And I said, do you know what you need? I said, you need someone to look after you. You need a good man and a good trainer that knows his boxing. And I sent him to Mick, and I do that with a lot of fighters as well. I sent it straight to Mick, so Mick works with him now. But I would have gone, I would have, I wish I'd have met Darren Barker when I was uh, 23, 24, not when I was 27, you know? Why is that? I was 26. Uh, I needed to be away, f- I needed to move away from home. Mm-hmm. And I did. I needed, you know, with, with Darren, it just clicked, you know? He was world champion, I respected him. I'm one of them people that like, if you've been done the scene it, whether it's boxing or anything, you know, like if if you if you talk to me about football, yeah, I go, well, you haven't done it, so shut up. But if Roy Keane said, "Listen, David, this is the facts of football," I'm gonna go right, okay, okay. Darren Barker, world champion. I just wish if I'd have met Darren Barker at 23, 24, or Jamie Moore when I was 23, 24, I think I'd have boxed for a world heavyweight title, to be honest. But I didn't, and I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. I don't regret one thing. I, I didn't. I didn't do it. Well, that's just how I feel. Like that's the only. Difference. That's the difference. I feel like I, that. That like, could have. I could have definitely done that, but I didn't. That's no one's fault. Just how life worked out. I'm mm-hmm. not, not. Not thinking about it. I, that, that's the only difference. I, that's the only different thing I'll probably do. Very good. Okay. Very last question. Um, this is from Josh Francis, and he has asked if you would have fight love. If you would have forced love joy. And one, yeah. Would you have still retired? Uh, no, probably not. I thought Love Joy, and then probably thought one more because the money would have been too much to say no to. But uh, Love Joy is a fucking pussy as well. And if anyone, if anyone follows him, yeah, just unfollow him because he's a fucking shit house. Well, what did he? What's why, he saying well, now? We'll finish with this one, yeah. Yeah. He, he's on the Instagram now, giving it a big and saying he retired me and all this, yeah. I he didn't fight him, you. I seen him in the hotel lobby, yeah. And I grabbed hold of his fucking T-shirt and his elbow. And I said, listen, you big cunt. I said, fucking get to my room now. I will plaster you all over the place. I said, get to my room now. Yeah. And he was like, no, 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 no. Shit himself. Yeah. And that's the facts of it. That is the facts. I don't talk bollocks, as you know. I said to him, 
I'll fucking do you right now. I don't give a fuck where you're from. I said, from, from fucking Los Angeles. I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, we're in fucking London, you idiot. I said, I'll scratch you, I'll scratch you here and now. He's a fucking pussy in. And he's annoying me again. And I told him that when I seen him in the hotel lobby. I said, I don't want to see no more on your, bollocks on your Instagram again while you're here. Because if you do, I'm coming, I'll am coming. i come and see you. And I don't lose my temper, as you know. But um, it really irritated me. And that's it now. Calm again now. If anyone follows him, just don't follow You know that's what? I, said to him, I don't mind him doing all the things. I understand what he's doing. He's trying to make a living. He's trying to make a thing of it. He's being fraud while he does it. But that's his business. But uh, we're talking shit about me. If he fights in the UK again, I'll go and slap him in, in the face. Open and slap in the face. Well, there we go. I don't want to tell him that. We can tell him because he says one more bad thing. He's really trying to irritate me, to be honest. But on that note, I'm going to calm down and take a breather. It's all right. <laughs> deep breaths, deep breaths. <laughs> um, so lo- there's loads of comments that have come in with people saying, like, sending their best wishes and stuff like that. So just so that you know. Will I put on the comments for a second so they can, they can tell you? Or will I not? I don't mind me. I hope we're talking, we're talking about me and you. No, they won't. So, oh, we will. We're going to wrap up this interview. But if you want to send Dave your best wishes, send them here so he can see them. Um, I yes, just the comments off. There is. Do you know where the little you oh, write the comments at the end? There's like three little dots there. So, have you turned them on now? They're on now. Can you not see them on I the screen? Oh, I can see them. Are they nice? Yeah, they're lovely. There's oh, you can't see them. That's so weird. Um, end it. Oh, I'll end it. End it. I'll start it with me and you. On my on my own one, my personal I'll, one. I'll start it on mine. I'll do on to yours. Yeah. Okay, grand. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, bye. we'll see you. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>